It is an incredible time of the year in the NHRA Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series as some of the top competitors in the country begin to try to establish dominance in the different categories of sportsman drag racing across the nation. We take a look at our Lucas Oil competition ladder here. We can see the Cummings Mahalik Stalba triumvirate on one side, Samsel Steel Mercier in the other. That is Karen Stalba, who will be in this final trio of cars, trying to make her way late into the day. And Karen's got great equipment over there, Brian. I think they might be the right place at the wrong time team more than anybody else the last couple of years. You know, we've seen it happen over the years, Alan, with pretty much every category. A racer like Karen and her team, they run into some, they run into the bad luck. And then as soon as the bad luck breaks, the winds start coming with frequency. This could be her weekend. Corey Mahalik, the fun that flip, Empowerment Alliance car in lane three, and the McPhillips family car of Matt Cummings in lane four. Mahalik is perfect. A perfect reaction time. Allen goes 536 to advance. Stall the advances of 538. But a perfect reaction time of one of these cars is nearly impossible. That's wild. I think I'd call that a lucky guess, but I guarantee you, Corey will take it. He will advance along with Karen Stalba into the second round. Really nice run there for the Fun That Flip team. Remember, his very first national event appearance came here in 2014, and he won that race back when they were racing with the Dreher family, where he and his brother Kyle were competing. But this car looks strong. Perfect reaction times aside. You saw a puff of smoke off the tires of Matt Cummings' car, much like we saw from Julie Natas, and that cost him. So it'll be four wide from here on out. That's the way they're going to match up as we head into the next round. Mahalik Stalba, Vetter, and Hep. On the other side, Steele, Mercier, Salinas, and Smith. The pipes, a red light for, Dan, for Mick Steele, and that ended his day as well. We have Vetter, we have Mahalik, we have Mike Hep, and in lane number one, we have Karen Stalba in the second half of the semifinal round. Taylor Vetter heating the tires on her dragster. And Mike Epp appears to be having a problem. Yeah, I think you're right, Brian. They are having some kind of an issue with it. I believe they're changing spark plug wires. When they started up, it kind of popped a little bit. I think one of the crewmen looked at it and said, hey, we got a couple of wires crossed back here. You know the difference between an alcohol car and a top fuel car, Brian? On a top fuel car, the cylinder head would be over there in Carabas County somewhere. You can see the starting line official making a motion to stop Hep, but he's going to make a quick burnout here. Boy, they're going to have to move this along, Alan. Well, as I've said before in the stadium, they call that the ready line, not the just a minute line. So when they had a problem, the other three drivers are already going through the routine. If you can shorten yours up to stay in the game, you can do that. But you can't hold up the other three. It looks like Mike Hep is going to make it. So all four cars are prepared to go. Veteran lane four, Mahalik lane three, Hep lane two, and Stalva seeking that elusive first win in lane number one. All four of them very gently working their way forward. We've got ejected nitro cars in lanes one and three, blown alcohol cars lanes two and four. Two are ready. Taylor's car's creeping on her. Well, she and Hep were both able to get him stopped and stay in stage. And it's going to be Taylor and Corey Mahalik that advanced. Taylor's car looked like he was trying to pull her through as lanes one or two took a little extra time to stage. But, Brian, she was able to maybe get off the throttle, keep it in the beams, and save the run. We get one more look at it before we head to the top end of the racetrack. Vetter lowering the RPM, saving the run. Now we head to Jamie. Now three career final round appearances for Corey Mahalik. All three of them coming here at ZMAX. What is it about this racetrack and this format that you've been able to figure out? I don't know, but this four white stuff's crazy. We were up there, and, and it seemed like we were staged forever. I don't know if somebody got got timed out, so we deep staged whatever it was. But when the, the 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 lights came down, we stood on it. Fun that flip. The Empowerment Alliance got a new partner with SJK Machine. My guys are the best. We can't wait to do this one more time. And now it is the final final of our Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series coverage here. The top alcohol dragster category, Jasmine Salinas, who is, by all account, having a career season so far in 2022, wants to keep the magic running. Taylor Vetter in lane three, Megan Smith in lane number two, and hiding out over there in lane number one, well, the only dude of the bunch. 
Yeah, Corey Mahalik comes in here having won one, finished runner-up in one in his first two rounds. Jasmine Salinas won both, so she's trying to go three for three. That's her dad. You see the medal on his neck? He won top fuel here this weekend, so trying to do a father-daughter double, which has only been done a couple of times. Megan Smith has got a runner-up and a runner-up in her two previous quads to get her here, and Taylor Venter has beaten everybody she's faced to the finish line so far. So Taylor and Jasmine both trying to stay undefeated. Megan Smith's mom, Rhonda, instructs her to pull the visor down. That is to fund that flip Empowerment Alliance car out of Ohio. Corey Mahalik driving, his brother Kyle standing to the right of the engine, trying to repeat the feat they turned in 2014 when they won this race with the Dreher family in their first ever national event final round. And for Jasmine Salinas, Rich McPhillips Sr. clapping his hands and walking away. Taylor Vetter, her machine has been top shelf, as Alan said, all day long. Smith's car continues to walk smoke off it in lane number two. And off they go. Mahalik, a 30 reaction time. He was perfect in round one, and he'll be perfect in the final with a win light. A whole shot victory, 535-2, beats the quicker 532-0 of Salinas. Allen, his first win was a storybook. This one also a storybook as Smith goes 49 and Vetter is 609. Yeah, but the first win was his first ever national event. I don't know how you ever top that. It's taken him a while to get back, but they finally did it. Corey Mahalik and his brother beat up on the ladies in the final round here this weekend with a solid effort by both the car and the driver. We watch one more time here as we can see the cars leaving the starting line. Low ET of the quartet was Jasmine Salinas, but low ET of reaction time was, of course, to Corey Mahalik, and that carried him through. Corey Mahalik gets the win on a whole shot. It was a 30 light here in the final. You had a trip zip in the first round of eliminations today. The focus, the concentration that requires, how did you do it? I love this stuff. This is something that my brother and I, we dream about ever since we bought this race car. I said it before. But the people that fund that flip in the Empowerment Alliance are the ones that have made this possible. We made a special helmet here last year that says, leave no doubt on it. Finally finished the job. There is no doubt who the champions were today. It's Mahalik Brothers Racing. Thank you so much. Congratulations.